ultrasound beam can be brought to a tight focus at a distance from its source. With sufficient energy concentrated within the focus, the cells lying within will be killed without damaging the surrounding tissues. High intensity focus ultrasound IFU, is, therefore, a non-invasive method of producing selective and trackless destruction of deeply seated tissue targets within the body without causing any damage to the overlying surrounding tissues. Ultrasound guided HIFU involves HIFU ablation under the guidance of real-time ultrasound imaging which can achieve an uninterrupted visualization of tissue cogulative necrosis during the treatment via grayscale changes in real time. The ablated lesions demonstrate an echogenicity or grayscale changes in the ultrasound images after the sonication, which enables immediate assessment of patient's response to ablation ensuring a safer and more controllable therapy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hello. 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 Hi, good day. Hello, Dr. Simon. Hello, Dr. Hi, Vidal. Hello. How are you? How are you, everyone? Nice hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you too. Yes, it's a great pleasure. Uh, of course, it's a great honor uh, to meet all of uh, our dear uh, professors and dear friends. Uh, today to uh, to share our experience and very important issue uh, talking about uh, talking about the uh, interventional issue uh, very important uh, related to great health problem uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, the cancer liver and the cancer pancreas. And of course, now we're talking about a new hope, a new, uh, new practically uh, validated method, uh, which is uh, HIFU. Of course, I, uh, it's honor today to meet uh, Dr. Simon, Dr. Fidal, Dr. Meng, Dr. Uh, uh, Zhou, and Dr. Yang. Uh, they have, of course, a great experience and treating uh, many patients with cancer uh, liver and uh, cancer pancreas. Uh, so I think uh, today uh, it's somehow an open discussion how to put uh, our uh, beloved technology, our uh, emerging excellent technology, how we can uh, share our experience to put it uh, on the guideline or even as a chosen treatment method uh, for a very important uh, a disease like uh, liver and pancreatic cancer. It's a great, uh, it's a great today as we have uh, many specialty. We have a surgeon, we have an oncologist, we have an interventionist, we have an hypho specialist uh, participating in uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, and I think at the end of the, our meeting, we can uh, find uh, some ideas to make it uh, validated on the ground. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, invite uh, Professor Simon uh, to introduce his uh, talk. Uh, he will talking about the high treatment for liver and the pancreatic tumor, for the liver tumor in difficult location, 
Of course, Professor Simon is a surgeon and he is a respectable professor in uh, liver surgery. So he can give us a uh, great and clear idea about the HIFU as a surgeon, what he think about it and how he, how he can uh, provide a good alternative for the patient. Uh, please, Professor Simon, uh, it's, uh, the ground is yours. Thank you. I'll just share my screen. Can you see my slide? Yes. Yep. Hi. Um, hi, good day, everyone. I'm Simon Tung from the Department of Surgery at the University of Hong Kong. And um, I'm honored to be invited to give the um, to share my experience regarding the uh, use of high intensity focus ultrasound for treatment of liver tumors in difficult locations. First of all, um, I have nothing to declare in, in terms of conflict of interest. And um, just a little bit of background regarding the treatment options, because um, in fact, in our locality, hepatocellular carcinoma is one of the commonest cancers, um, one of the commonest primary cancers we encounter in our practice. But unfortunately, up to 75% of these patients are uh, not suitable for liver resection for various reasons. And the most common reason for unresectability is the presence of cirrhosis. And um, so the treatment options are rather limited. And they include um, in the presence of mild cirrhosis like child A disease, child QA disease, then a limited resection such as a wedge resection or a segmentectomy may be performed. But in certain cases where resection is deemed to be dangerous or um, too invasive or the liver is too cirrhotic because of poor endocyanin green retention tests or the uh, degree of portal hypertension, then we may actually opt for radiofrequency ablation or microwave ablation of these local tumors if they're small enough, like less than three centimeters in size. Uh, other tumors may be treated by um, stereotactic radiation therapy and a multifocal disease may be used to treat, uh, may be amenable to transarterial chemoembolization. And there's also the option of liver transplantation in selected cases if they fulfill the UCSF criteria. But unfortunately in our locality, because of the scarcity of liver grafts, uh, that is not often the case. And we may just have to opt for ablation in some of these for local disease. And um, some patients with systemic disease may need systemic therapy as well. And um, HIFU has its use because it is non-invasive. It is a transcutaneous treatment and it is um, well tolerated by patients. I'm not gonna go into the basics of HIFU because I, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not part of this talk, but uh, what we have to share, what we have to understand here is that HIFU can be offered if the liver tumor, if it's solitary, if it's less than five centimeters in size, it may be, um, it may be suitable. And we only offer HIFU if there is unresectable disease or if um, we consider after a multidisciplinary meeting that radio frequency ablation or microwave ablation is not feasible. And in fact, if there is ascites, then radio frequency ablation may not be the best treatment because of the risk of bleeding. And also there's a risk of liberty compensation as well. Whereas in HIFU, we have shown that as the presence of ascites is not a contraindication. And we can even perform high full ablation in the presence of advanced cirrhosis in patients with child B or child C cirrhosis, as long as there is no evidence of hepatic encephalopathy. And because this is a transcutaneous treatment without any wounds, then the recovery is very quick. The majority of our patients, in fact, over 90% of our patients can go home the following day. And we, um, for tumors that are smaller than three centimeters, we have shown that the complete ablation rate may be up to 68% after one session of treatment with high full. But then there are certain contraindications for high flow against HDC. Um, this procedure has to be done with breath holding and it has to be done under general anesthesia. So if the patient is uh, medically unfit for general anesthesia, then we should not offer high flow. And if there's any evidence of major vascular invasion, such as main portal vein or side branch portal vein invasion of the tumor, then we should not give high flow. If there's evidence of extra hepatic disease or direct invasion into the surrounding organs, like um, invasion into the colon, invasion into the gallbladder, 
then HIFU is contraindicated. And last and most and not least, um, if we cannot see the tumor with ultrasound, because our system is ultrasound based, if we cannot see the tumor, then we cannot treat it because that's the physics involved. If the sound waves cannot um, get to the tumor uh, by localization, then we cannot treat it. And um, uh, most and foremost, um, the patient's skin condition has to be satisfactory as well. And this is a system we use, which is the JC system from Chongqing Haifu Technology Company. And we've been using this uh, very reliable workhorse for over 10 years and it served us very well. And it's uh, benefited hundreds of patients in our center. And the patient is typically, typically treated under general anesthesia for ablation of liver tumors. And there's, it comprises of a console, which is a control console. There's an um, imaging console, uh, imaging um, system with ultrasound, real-time ultrasound guidance in a water bath. And the patient lies either on the prone position or in the right lateral position for ablation with a treatment transducer, which is embedded inside the system here. And so um, unfortunately, because this is a transcutaneous ultrasound guided ablation system, then there are difficult locations. Some parts of the tumor, when they're located in the dome of the liver, for example, in uh, the dome of segment eight or segment seven, the liver dome is actually surrounded by a diaphragm, lung around it, surrounded by rib cage and front and to the sides as well. So you can't see it very well. And um, there's also risk of um, uh, other locations may um, sustain thermal injury if we're not careful. For example, if the tumor is located in the dome of the liver on the left liver, such as the left lateral section, uh, if you're not careful, you may actually injure the heart because the ultrasound energy travels. And as it traverses the surrounding tissues, it may cause injury to the surrounding uh, collateral structures, such as the heart, or if you're close to the bile ducts, it may actually cause biliary duct injury resulting in biloma or liver abscess. Uh, you may injure major blood vessels, risk of injury to hollow organs, such as to the gallbladder, to the stomach, the duodenum, or the bowel, such as the colon and, as well. And I'm going to show you a few cases here. Um, uh, whenever we do um, high flu ablation, we always make sure that prior to the procedure and general anesthesia, we have to make sure that we can actually see the tumor. So we always have um, axial imaging, such as a CT scan or MRI available to us, and we review the image. And here we can see that there is a tumor situated in segment seven of the liver, close to the dome, situated pretty high up, as you can see here. It's surrounded by lung tissue, surrounded by a little bit of ascites, a very cirrhotic liver. And if, imagine that if you're going to do a transcutaneous ultrasound, it's going to be rather difficult if you do it from the side, from the abdominal wall, from the chest wall. But whereas if you do it from the, in the lower position, if you do it subhepatically, if you place a probe and pointing it towards the head, pointing at cephalid and angulating it, then you easily visualize the dome, even in the presence of air around the dome, because you're actually looking from downwards, from down upwards, you're looking up towards the head of the patient, towards the right shoulder, and so you're going to be able to visualize the tumor. So, okay, we're happy with that. We're going to anesthetize the patient. We place the patient uh, uh, on the machine and we also ensure that we can actually visualize it using the ultrasound transducer in the high full JC system machine. Place in the right lateral position. And here you can actually tilt and angulate the transducer towards the head end. To the right side of this uh, video is the head end, the left side is the foot. And here we're actually using the motor to tilt it towards the head. And you can see it's tilting and you're going to be able to visualize lesions close to the dome of the liver. As you can see here in the schematic diagram down below, you're tilting it towards the head direction. So you're going to be able to see it. But unfortunately, it's still surrounded by diaphragm. You can't see it very clearly. There's a bit of air around it because there's lung tissue close to the tumor in the diaphragm. So this is not satisfactory because HIFU, the energy that is used to ablate does not travel very well through air. And so in order to make a good acoustic medium, we have to find something else. And therefore we, first of all, have to localize the tumor 
So we use transcutaneous ultrasound to mark the spot where we can actually visualize the tumor, where we're going to place the transducer. We degas and degrease the skin, place the patient under general anesthesia, under total intravenous anesthesia with the um, mechanical ventilation, and we use artificial right pleural effusion. Um, I'm sure some of you may be familiar with this procedure, and this is to allow for safe and clear visualization of the structures around the dome of the liver. And that would allow for the lung tissue on the right side to be displaced. And that would allow you to visualize the entire diaphragm and seeing the entire door of the liver very clearly, as you can see here. And the technique is done by um, under an aseptic technique. The patient is first anesthetized. We place the patient in the vas alpha maneuver and stop the ventilator. And then we um, prep the skin with, um, with antiseptic and place a 16 gauge two epidural needle into the right fourth intercostal space along the mid axillary line. And where we locate the pleural space by a loss resistance technique. If we get a smooth column of fluids entering the pleural space, then it's going to be very smooth, unrestricted, unrestricted flow of normal saline. And we typically infuse between 600 and 800 milliliters of warm normal saline into the pleural space. And following that, we place the patient back into the right lateral position and get this kind of image here. And as, as you can see here, the entire dome of the liver is very clearly visualized. Uh, the P is a plural space. Uh, the R is a rib. So between the ribs, you can see the entire dome of the liver very clearly. And here's the tumor with the red arrow next to it. Next, uh, we do the sonication. We do intermittent breath holds during sonication. And um, following right, artificial right pleural infusion, we can see here, we do not see any lung tissue at all. We can see the tumor very clearly. We can see the entire diaphragm very clearly, and we can sonicate. Um, we can achieve complete ablation of up to 68% of cases if the tumor measures less than three centimeters across. And, um, these patients actually make a very good recovery after the procedure. They are typically, typically extubated, sent back to our usual surgical ward, and um, we do not routinely drain the pleural effusion. We allow it to be absorbed. And there's a very small pneumothorax risk of around 2%. And we typically just do serial chest radiographs, at, first of all, in the, uh, a few hours after the procedure and then on a daily basis. And as long as the patient is asymptomatic, we let them go home. And the median length of stay in our patients is around one day. Uh, there's an extremely rare late complication of diaphragmatic injury, but that only happens a few years afterwards. And that's um, probably due to delayed diaphragmatic rupture, but that was only one case of that. And never have we seen patients who require surgery to, to treat their um, complication. And these patients, have a procedure which is extremely well tolerated, even in the case of uh, advanced cirrhosis. Uh, secondly, I'd like to talk about um, uh, what to do if there is a tumor which is close to um, vascular structures or portal pedicles, because there's always a worry about injury to the um, portal pedicles or to the veins around and to the bile ducts as well, because there's a dreaded complication of a biloma afterwards. Um, and here we have a patient who had a, a 2.5 centimeter hepatocellular carcinoma situated in segment seven of the liver, as you can see here. And we performed HIFU. In fact, what we see here, after one month after HIFU ablation, we did this MRI scan with contrast. And here the tumor is completely ablated. There is no further enhancement in the arterial phase. And in DWI, there is actually no, no, um, intense, uh, no signal at all. And here you can see that the, um, if you look very closely, you're going to see that the right hepatic vein is completely spared, it's still patent. Whereas this tumor was exactly abutting against the right hepatic vein. But fortunately, there was no evidence of an invasion into the um, main trunk of the right hepatic vein, and there's no evidence of any in, uh, inferior vena cava tumor thrombus. And so this patient uh, had complete ablation despite the tumor being right next to the right hepatic vein. And we have been shown, in fact, animal studies and also in vivo studies by, um, by Professor Joe and both um, from Dr. Orsi from Italy have shown that um, even if the tumor is abutting 
a major hepatic vein, complete ablation is safe as long as the tumor is not invading into the hepatic vein. But of course, because of the high flow inside the hepatic vein, we have to be aware of possible incomplete ablation because of the heat sinking effect, which may actually reduce the efficacy of the temperature rise during sonication. So we have to make an allowance to that. But we have to be aware that a portal pedicle is a completely different story because here we have a tumor which is um, in the very cirrhotic liver, there is ascites. In fact, the patient underwent transarterial chemoembolization prior to this high food. And this tumor is actually close to, but not invaded into the right posterior portal pedicle as shown here. And because there is a, a few millimeters distance between the main trunk of the portal pedicle and the tumor, and because this tumor is actually in the periphery of the liver, then we can still safely do sonication by high food and ablate this but we have to take extra care because if we're not careful, if we injure the portal pedicle, the patient may develop liver decompensation, liver abscess and bilomas. And we definitely think that it's safe if we do it, if the tumor is situated five millimeters or more away from a pedicle or a bile duct. Likewise, we have to make sure that we reduce the power of ablation when we run close to the pedicle. So the usual principles of ablating from deep to superficial has to be done, but we have to be careful that we do not go too deep, otherwise we're going to hit the pedicle. Next, uh, here's the uh, one, point, one centimeter tumor in the uh, segment four and eight of the liver, which is actually my colleague called me because he said that it's rather close to the heart. And in fact, it's, um, this is uh, on the diagram on the left is the uh, handheld ultrasound probe. And it's rather close to, but it's still about three centimeters from the heart. So we decided that it is still safe. And as you can see here, the patient has a bit of uh, ascites as well. So uh, visualization is extremely good and uh, good high food can be done. Uh, but we have to be careful, making sure that we have we take the usual precautions regarding tilting the probe, making sure that we can see the tumor very clearly. We don't go through any of the ribs. We don't want to risk a skin burn. We don't want to go too deep and hit the heart. We've never had a cardiac injury in our uh, in our uh, case series of over 500 cases of HIFU, luckily. And um, as we can see here, HIFU is extremely precise. And next, I'd like to show you a little video about this lady who is quite cirrhotic with portal hypertension, secondary to cirrhosis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis with a large sizable tumor occupying uh, the left lateral section of the liver. Because of the presence of uh, portal hypertension, we decided that she's not a candidate for surgery. And because of the size of the tumor and because of her underlying condition, we decided that high food would be best for her. And that's her choice as well to undergo this treatment. But as you can see here, it is rather close to the stomach. It's um, rather close to the surrounding vascular structures. So we just have to make the usual precautions. But um, on the high full screening, we could not see the tumor very clearly because of the surrounding fatty liver. So we decided to, that we had to alter the, um, the ultrasound properties of the tumor. And so we decided to perform a transarterial chemoembolization first. And by doing highly selective um, chemoembolization, uh, highly selective angiography of the left uh, hepatic artery, we're able to see a very, get a very good uh, blush from the highly vascular HCC in the left lateral section. And we use an iodized oil emulsion plus a splatin to embolize this. And we're able to get a very good view on subsequent high food two weeks later. And uh, we got a very good ablation uh, but because this is situated in the left liver, it's rather close to the stomach. So we had to make sure that we, the patient's adequately fasted. Um, we gave the patient a fleet enema and an enema as well to make sure that uh, the colon is not grossly distended. We insert a nasogastric tube in order to decompress the stomach to reduce the risk of gastric injury. We place the patient in the prone position. And as usual, we place the probe slightly down in order to angulate the in order to, to angulate um, the probe to upwards so that we do not hit any of the mediastinal structures such as the heart. And um, we're able to completely ablate this tumor after using up around 741,000 joules 
uh, over a period of around two and a half hours. This is the aftermath. The patient had previous cholecystectomy, as you can see the scar here. There's some erythema from uh, the local ablation uh, by HIFU. But after apl application of ice packs overnight, the patient's skin condition was completely fine the following day, and she went home one day later. And the um, treatment was successful. As you can see here, I placed an X. The X appears to be higher up. In fact, we pointed the we placed the transducer a little bit lower down than the X, and then we pointed the transducer more carefully, so that it pointed upwards towards the patient's. Uh, uh, to, uh, from down towards the patient's um, diaphragm in order to avoid hitting the mediastinal structures such as the heart. And the patient made a very good recovery without any complication. And um, here, lastly, I'm going to show you just ablation, a video of a small tumor in the subcapsular posterior inferior segment three of the liver. Yeah, we have to be careful. A nasogastric tube was inserted in order to decompress the stomach. As you can see here, there's probably uh, this hyper echoic area is actually the stomach and the surrounding omentum, but we can still do a safe ablation of a subcapsular tumor, even if it's close. We do not do ablation if it's invaded into the stomach or invaded into a hollow viscous, but we can still ablate if it's close to it, as long as we control the power. And as you can see here, there's satisfactory grayscale change. And so in summary, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are certain tips and tricks regarding um, high food for liver tumors in difficult um, locations. First of all, we have to make sure that we angulate the transducer. Uh, we place it a little, bit, a little bit lower down, but angulated kefalat, so that we're looking into the liver from down towards, uh, towards the diaphragm rather than through the chest wall. And secondly, for right liver tumors, uh, artificial pleurofusion is extremely useful in order to visualize tumor lesions in the dome of the liver. If we can't see the tumor lesion very clearly, we can use taste and then do high through a couple of weeks later. And uh, we can assure you that it's safe to ablate when the tumor is abutting a hepatic vein, but we have to make sure that we have at least five millimeters distance from portal pedicles or the hollow viscera or from the heart. And so this is a recent review article I, um, I wrote in the Internal National Journal of Hypothermia, which um, I hope that I can share some of my experience with um, my colleagues, uh, all these esteemed colleagues worldwide. And this is our hospital. And uh, this is a view from our ward. And this is our young team. And thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Simon, for uh, this uh, very comprehensive and uh, very nice presentation. Uh, can you. I ask if, uh, if any one of the audience or participants uh, uh, want to ask uh, Professor Simon uh, any question? Uh, so I want to ask you uh, two questions, Professor Simon. Thank you. Uh, 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 you mentioned uh, you choose uh, to treat the tumors below five centimeter, not below three centimeter. Uh, I think this is uh, a, a very good, uh, very good uh, thinking from uh, your side as a surgeon, because. Uh, the, all the guidelines uh, talking about the three centimeter as a guy as a cutoff line to treat uh, HCC with uh, interventional procedure. So, uh, what do you think about your experience about uh, vascular invasion if the tumor uh, more than three centimeter, maybe reaching uh, four point six, like uh, tumor root treated by uh, HIFO? Um, thank you, Professor. This is a very good question. We've been thinking about this for over 10 years, actually. Um, from our experience, uh, HIFU is a very safe procedure. Uh, we have to tell the patient the current data, which is um, we probably cannot completely, we, there is a high chance that we cannot completely ablate the tumor if we just do HIFU alone. And so we uh, often combine it with transarterial chemoembolization. If the, tumor, if the patient's liver function is satisfactory. That would enable us to treat more than one tumor or larger tumors. And we can also do interval high foods. We can send the patient back for another procedure 
another high full session, say uh, a month or two after the initial procedure. So we sometimes have to do repeated ablations in order to get adequate coverage of the tumor. But in the meantime, because HCC is a very aggressive tumor, we have to find some other way to control it apart from high full. And uh, we find that transarterial chemoembolization is extremely well tolerated. And we offer this in conjunction with high food if the patient's suitable. So very clear. Also, I want to ask you uh, regarding your experience in treating a patient with liver cancer. Uh, what about the complication you faced? What is the famous complication? And uh, what is the nightmare complication you faced in your experience? Uh, professor, do you mean uh, treating with HIFU or with... Yes, yes, treating with HIFU, yeah. Uh, with HIFU, in fact, uh, we've been very fortunate in that we've had very few complications from HIFU. Uh, we've, um, the commonest complication we've had, uh, the commonest serious complication we've had was very early on in our learning curve when we had some skin burns. Yeah. The skin burns was uh, secondary to... Uh, injudicious use of too high a power in between the ribs. We probably could not see the lesions very clearly and we used too high a power. And uh, the uh, tumor was close to the um, capsule of the liver and some of the energy actually reflected off the ribs and actually reflected back onto the skin that resulted in skin burns. Uh, the worst skin burn I saw required a local rotational flap or an advancement flap done by our plastic surgeons in order to uh, um, to treat the skin burn. But uh, luckily, none of these skin burns resulted in sepsis or infection or other complications. So we were extremely fortunate. Uh, other complications which we occasionally see are pneumothoraces. We do not routinely put in chest tubes after HIFU, even after even if we see a small pneumothorax, we only put in a chest tube if there is an expanding pneumothorax or if there's any evidence of respiratory distress. But the last patient I saw who suffered from any form of respiratory distress following high flu was probably a few years ago. And we can quote that the risk of that is extremely low, less than 1% requiring chest drainage. So these are the two, okay. common, uh, two in, uh, complications that we see. But apart from these, yeah. we've seen nothing else. And, and you classified this complication as a minor complication. As a surgeon, this is not a big deal. Uh, well, um, it's uh, relative. Uh, well, um, some patients required a, a excision of the skin burn and debridement. Yeah. yeah, clear. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Simon. Thank you for sharing your experience. And uh, it's a great uh, question to hear from you. Uh, now, uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Professor uh, Jean Vidal. Uh, he is uh, one of the famous uh, interventionists, uh, oncology interventionists, and he, is, uh, he had a good experience in treating uh, the patient with HIFU. He treated more than 200 or 250 cases from cancer, uh, from liver, and pancreatic tumor, and he will give us an uh, idea about his uh, great experience and uh, about the Spanish uh, experience in treating liver and pancreatic tumor. Uh, Professor Vidal, if you please. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't see myself, but uh, I suppose that I'm here. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Here I am. So I suppose that everything is okay. So let me just do that. Okay. So, well, first of all, uh, I want to thank you, the organization, for allowing me to present my experience here. It's always a pleasure to see my friends from Tonjin Haifu and all of you, uh, professors and doctors, that, that, that share this. Uh, nice experience of working with uh, non-invasive uh, ablation, uh, focus ultrasound, HIFU, which is one of the, the best uh, medical technologies that we can have today to fight 
cancer, uh, to fight tumors. So uh, my experience, as you will see in this presentation, and some ideas that how we have to progress and what's uh, the future expecting uh, to all of us. Let's see. So the purpose of this presentation is to clarify all the all the questions that uh, probably are the most uh, difficult to see in liver and pancreatic tumors. And because uh, this is becoming now a very interesting field for different companies, different groups of research to see uh, if with our experience, we can help them to not to go through all our learning curve uh, and, and save them uh, uh, time and, and resources. Well, this is uh, our experience. The last 12 years, we've been dealing with uh, Focus Ultrasound, with HIFU, with the JC uh, from Chongqing HIFU and the JC200, and both devices are excellent from our point of view. And uh, we always uh, have deal with the concept of trying to control local disease with non-invasive techniques, and then that this control of local disease can help us to manage the systemic disease. Uh, we've done in these last 12 years uh, uh, around 238 malignant tumors, is more than 250 now, and, and around 90 primary and metastatic liver tumors, and 85 uh, non-resectable stage 3 and 4 pancreatic tumors. So we, in talking about the liver, uh, this is uh, our first study that we included in the first 40 patients. Uh, we, include, we include patients that were not candidates for surgery or other ablation available, not radiofrequency, not microwave, because that was the standard treatment at this point. And all the patients were allowed to do their systemic chemotherapy before or after our procedure. Uh, mainly, we did 25% uh, uh, primary tumors and 75% metastatic tumors. Only a few percentage of patients did not have chemotherapy, and the majority, 80%, had chemotherapy. And this is the survival course, uh, analyzing the, the first uh, 40 liver tumors. Uh, total treatment timings were between 60 and 180 minutes. The difficulties were related to patient positioning, access to segments seven and eight, as uh, our first speaker showed uh, that were the most difficult uh, situations. Uh, but access to deep lesions is feasible with uh, high full uh, access to segment one, access to tumors close to inferior vena cava. Uh, the responses were very successful, 92% in all cases. Uh, mostly with uh, no complications, 85%, and, and a small percentage of complications uh, with uh, burning of the skin and one hematoma. And in this case, we had to deal with, uh, you know, resecting the, and using plastic surgery to cover the, the defect when, when we did uh, a burning of the skin. The survival curve shows that uh, is about around 30% of five years follow-up uh, of these patients. Going towards the pancreas now, which is probably the most difficult scenario that, that we have uh, in these cases, and probably what makes uh, high flow ablation the standard of care, or that is going to become the standard of care for tumors that are not resectable. So pancreas tumor is a priority because of the incidence prevalence of these tumors. There is increasing uh, in the world, in the, in the, uh, in the world. Uh, median survival is around 18 months. Five-year survival is around 10%. Most of the cases are uh, diagnosed when uh, there is no resection possible. And there is around 450,000 deaths per year worldwide. The anatomy is very difficult, and there are no gender or age-related specific uh, difficulties. We, we see here how we see the, the treatment in a JC uh, in a JC focus ultrasound high four device. And here we see the response. Let me show better with this. We see here the, the, the stomach and going towards the stomach, we can ablate the tumor in the head of the pancreas.
So uh, what we did in this case is try to make a, a comparative experience study. Uh, so we had our cohort of patients and we compared with a retrospective cohort of patients treated at the same institution at the same period of time, only with the standard chemotherapy regimes that were used by our medical oncology colleagues. There was a seven years observational retrospective comparative cohort study and mainly were uh, patients with a stage three and four pancreatic tumors that were treated with uh, the standard chemotherapy at that time that was uh, uh, chemotherapy uh, with, uh, with the main combinations. Uh, we, we did uh, focus ultrasound plus chemotherapy 57 cases and uh, the control group 58 patients treated with uh, similar combinations. The chemotherapy combinations were uh, gemcitabine combination, most of them, 58%, and others, uh, the rest. So the responses were seen in 82% of the cases. There were 12 complete responses. We see 21% of complete responses after treatment with the combined treatment of HIFO plus chemotherapy. What uh, a small set of complications, two pancreatitis, uh, two skin burns, and, uh, and one patient died of a delayed duodenal perforation that was not uh, detected because the patient went out of our facility, went to another hospital, and, and that there was a delay on the, on the diagnosis in, in this case. As we can see here, we see here the survival curves with the difference, uh, the survival analysis between the group of chemotherapy alone versus the group of chemotherapy plus uh, HIFO shows a statistically significant benefit for the group of patients treated with focus ultrasound HIFO plus chemotherapy. And the multivariate analysis, the hash ratio is 0.45. That means that patients treated with chemotherapy plus HIFO have a 45% less probability of dying during this follow-up period, which is uh, very interesting, this, this comparison. That, that needs to be reinforced with uh, with studies with prospective studies but as a way of uh, showing that we are in in the right way of doing with uh, with this case so that uh, what we can consider that uh, it's uh, i would say the the road map that we should do and what you should we should achieve in this is uh, to registries. This is a project of a, of a registry of a pancreatic cancer registry, international registry that's being done by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation in the US with all different uh, facilities that treat pancreatic cancer with, uh, with HIFU. Uh, and the objectives are collect data and see if with this collection of data, we can prove that Focus Ultrasound plus chemotherapy in a prospective way is the, the standard of treatment. Now, uh, what I'm going to explain is what we can think and what we can show that the problems that we can face when dealing with the spaces can be solved in the clinical site with the devices that we have. So we have the, the, the problem of the pancreatic cancer basically is the tumor microenvironment, the fibrotic tissue that surrounds the pancreatic tumor, the difficulties with cancer cell recognition because this tumor is very well protected from the immunity and the delivery of treatment is difficult to reach the, the, the tumor. The immunity is not very well uh, uh, awakened when it's trying to confront the pancreatic tumor and we, we may think here that do we need an ablation or we just need tumor disruption with, with HIFO that allows other treatments to penetrate in the tumor and complete the ablation that we're doing with, uh, with HIFO. So we have to respond with this, with research in the role of hyperthermia, if it needs to be a, an ablation or can be a low hyperthermia can be of use. How can we deal with this tumor microenvironment? How can we disrupt this tumor microenvironment and the fibrotic tissue to allow the drug delivery inside the tumor? How can we enhance the immune uh, in front of that and with 
uh, high for we can obtain some uh, abscopal effect, which is the effect that we can obtain together with the high four and the immunity against the tumor. And at the end, the tumor disruption, which is our, which should be our main objective. So this is what we face in the systemic, but then there's local problems. And the surgical problems that we face is the, interfer the possible interference between the small bowel of the colon, the tumor invasion of the duodenum, the placement of a biliary stent that can make difficulties in treatment, the obstruction post-treatment of bowel, biliary, or pancreatic ducts, and the invasion of vessels. And to do that, we need to previously obtain uh, difficulties and uh, avoid bowel interference. Uh, so positioning very well, use of wear balloon, do not treat the duodenum affected cases because there is a risk of perforation of or delayed fistula formation. Always treat after state placement in the pancreas head tumors. And then we, have, we can treat with different angles of sonication to cover the back space of the, of the stand and do not treat vessels if there is a thrombus inside these vessels. So the recommendations are to use uh, in anesthesia techniques of respiratory gating, uh, avoid shallow breathing, uh, shallow breathing volumetry. So use that the, the so the, the tumor is as still as we can have, as we can have. Do not treat surgical cases. Stage two and three of, or borderline patients are the best candidate. Metastatic cases are the best candidates. And there is a, an area between the head and neck and the body of the pancreas where probably is when 60% of the tumors are presented. And here is when we can obtain the best results. And what not to do? Treat tumors close to the duodenum with the risk of fistula, use a water balloon, anti tube placement, and gas minimization procedure as helpers to our, uh, to our treatments. So in the pancreas, we don't have to expect 100% ablations with tumor margin. We have to reinforce the strategies to aim at the tumor microenvironment disruption and work with protocols of combined chemotherapy, targeted therapy, or immunotherapy. And that would be the best area where to treat if we have a tumor of the pancreas. So the ideal candidate would be a tumor at the stage two or three that had partially responded to the first chemotherapy line that has a tumor placed in this area between the head and the body of the pancreas that is not bigger on the pancreatic borders and there is an absence of any bowel structure between the tumor and the skin. So if we had to write a letter to Santa Claus and, and ask what would be uh, our future and what we want them to, to bring us. So we have to consider that the tumor is a substantive entity. The disease is a life inside another life. The disruption of this with less harm to the individual is probably our main objective. We have to enhance our own defenses systems and we have to deal with cancer stem cells. So we have to break the tumor from the inside. We have to adopt the cancer hallmarks to help us deal with this tumor. We have to uh, face the difficulties for tumor nutrition and cutting ways of delivery of nutrition to this tumor, help with immune attack, and breaking the structure inside the tumor. So this is, uh, this is all. I am ready for questions. Again, thank you for, for you listening to me at this uh, presentation. And uh, this is a group of, uh, of our team uh, that been dealing with our colleagues, GYN, with the, with the ablation of uh, fibroids. And thank you, and I'm ready for questions. Thank you, Professor Vidal, for a very nice experience and a very uh, clear, sharp edges uh, how we can use HIFU in treating pancreatic uh, tumor in the, in the future and in the present, of course. Uh, anyone? Uh, Want to ask Professor Vidal uh, about his uh, very nice presentation? Of course, I have a lot of questions, Professor Vidal, uh, because we are uh, 
we are sharing uh, the same uh, speciality. And uh, of course, I am uh, interested in your work, a very scientific way of thinking. I, uh, first of all, I, of course, we have an experience uh, to treat pancreatic tumor also in our center. But uh, there is a, a debatable question uh, regarding the stent before uh, treating pancreatic cancer. Uh, of course, uh, my, uh, my protocol and treatment, I put a metallic stent uh, whenever I can do this in, uh, in my patients. But uh, Professor Holger and Marinova from Pone, uh, last uh, episode, uh, they gave us uh, another idea. They treated uh, about uh, 150 cases or more, even more, uh, most of these patients, uh, uh, they treated uh, this patient without putting a stent or even sometimes with a plastic stent. So I wanted to, uh, to hear from you about this and what is your uh, experience and what is your opinion? Well, my, my opinion is if we have, uh, uh, as I said, the ideal candidate, so if we have a tumor, that it's uh, far from the from the birsum, from the pancreatic duct, and you're sure that you're not going to have problems of possible pancreatitis, and you're dealing with a small tumors. Uh, I think that this is this is a, a very well idea. So um, I, I don't know both this, and I, and I think that you know Holger and, and Milka Marinovic have a lot of experience, and they can do it with a small size tumors. But if you if you deal with tumors in the, in the close to the margin, if you do, if you deal with bigger tumors, you need to put the stand because if not, you're going to have troubles and you're going to have the criticism of your colleagues <laughs> that they don't want you to do HIFO and they tell us that, that they will tell you that why you didn't do that because then you can have this problem. So it's more it's more a safe question uh, with bigger tumors than a question of uh, of uh, in an institution where the 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 HIFO is very well accepted. For instance, in their institution, the institution of, of Bonn, everybody agrees with the program. Everybody is uh, very well supportive of the program and they can do that with all the, uh, in the commitment of their colleagues. Uh, when you deal with this and you're not, you don't have the, whole, the full support of your colleagues, you have to take defensive measures. And, uh, and uh, the metallic stand is a defensive measure. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> Yes, yes, I prefer like this because also we we not working under the umbrella of surgeon. To, but they send the patient and they need uh, to manage everything and send the patient back. So uh, I, I usually be very cautious regarding this. Maybe this is a different situation in Pone University. They are working in a multidisciplinary and the surgeon is protecting them. I think this is an issue. Uh, another question... There is another thing also that uh, when they send us the patient, most of them, they, they come up to us with the biliary stand in place. Yes. Is what they yeah. did at the beginning. In, in the diagnosis process, when they see some jaundice and they see some risk of jaundice, they just put the, the, the stand and then they consult you. And when you, the patients come to us, most of them have the, the stand in place. Okay. They, they bought a metallic or plastic stand, Dr. Vidal? Metallic. Metallic, because Metallic, they yeah. think that the, from, the, the from, start, is from a start, yeah, yeah. Berman from a start, yeah. Okay, what, what about your experience regarding uh, the response of, of HIFU uh, for pain, the pain, uh, the pain scoring for the patient? It's improving very good after HIFU for a session. What's your experience? I think that it probably is the, the best indication for pancreatic uh, tumors, the pain control, because with HIFU, pain control is obtained, I would say 90, 99% of the cases. And actually is one of the indications in, in, in the US, uh, they, they're going to establish an indication with the FDA for that, because uh, it's very, very, very effective in pain. So in, in this case, I, I, I can say that uh, in, in my patients, uh, we've been, uh, more, uh, I would say, eager to obtain other things because pain was always was almost always obtained. Yeah. So, thank you very much, Dr. Vidal. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, hear from you. Uh, now, it, I am honored to uh, uh, introduce Professor Meng. 
Professor Meng from Shanghai Medical University, and he has uh, had a good experience in minimally invasive treatment, and he will uh, share his experience uh, with us uh, regarding the, the HIFO treatment uh, for pancreatic uh, cancer. Uh, please, Professor Meng. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Chairman's introduction. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Oh, okay, uh, let's share me the uh, screen. Please. So it's uh, okay? Okay, Professor Meng, everything is working. Go. Oh, oh, thanks, please. thanks. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Fudan University of Shanghai Cancer Center, and my job yes. is for from the liver and the pancreas cancer. So it's my pleasure to have this opportunity to, to share the, our experience with the HIFU in the pancreatic cancer. So we know that they have widely used ultrasound in the medical area. So most of, uh, most of, uh, mostly it's the diagnosis, and we also, could, uh, we also can use the ultrasound to treat cancer malignant or the benign, benign tumor. So uh, the very successful cases, the five broad. And uh, in, in our center, we use the high food for the pancreas cancers more than 10 years. And uh, why we use the, the high food in the pancreas cancer and uh, only the, because the progression for the pancreas cancers is still very, very uh, slowly. And uh, this the situation for the pancreas cancer, the current and uh, only 10% only of the pancreas cancer can resectable. And even after the operation and the five years survival was still very poor. And for the uh, local advanced and the metastatic liver cancer, the, the situation is still very, very serious. And the other problems in the past 10 years, the progression for the pancreas cancer is very slow. So these are two day tables we can see uh, it's the almost, almost the similar in the in the 2020s and the 2020. So in the NCC NCC guideline for the local advanced disease of the pancreas cancer, the the first choice the clinical trial and but not the systemic chemotherapy. That means the chemotherapy is the almost doesn't work in the pancreas cancer. So in my center, we uh, uh, the equipment we use the uh, scanned by the ultrasound. We also have a equipment scanned by the MRI, but um, we uh, mostly use the uh, the equipment and the ultrasound because uh, it's the more available, and uh, the equipment the equipment and the uh, the uh, uh, under the MRI is uh, very very complicated as because it's also uh, it's not in our department. So uh, this is the the whole timelines for the high food the for the for the pancreas cancer in our center, and our center is the I think the biggest the center for the pancreas cancer is uh, more than two thousand two thousand new cases a year. So we have a lot of uh, the choice for the for the for the high foods for the pancreas cancer. So we started beginning of the high food in the pancreas cancer around 2008. So this is the initial attempt is in the around 2008. And uh, because before the 2008, we are very carefully to use the high food for the pancreas cancer because we know the pancreas cancer we are, with a very deep organ that very soft and uh, it's uh, easy to have the risk. So we are very we carefully to do some cases, very high selected cases. So around 2008, only 39 cases for the local advanced the pancreas cancer treated by the by the high food, seven in the head of pancreas and 32 in the body and the teal. But we have we have finished the follow up and we go back to see the data, and they look like it's a very successful and a very good outcome because the median survival time of these uh, 39 cases is the uh, almost the one years and the complication is why very minus and uh, the very key point is very uh emitting results it's the pain relief in the this case uh, in the this uh, 39 cases almost 80 percent 
the pain relief is very successful. So this is the uh, almost the first the first the cases give me a very deep impression because this the cases diagnosed the the ones the pancreas cancer and the, treated by the chemotherapy and the concrete with the radiation. But after the half course of the radiation, the pain and the worse and the worse. So we do the CT scan, this uh, image, we can see the tumor in the body of the pancreas and uh, involve the vascular. And uh, so uh, we uh, discussed this the cases because it filled by the chemo and the radiation. So at that time, we don't have another op an option. So we are, uh, try the high food for these cases. And the why this case gave me a very deep impression because after the high food, the, the, the day, the, uh, after the high food, the day, the, uh, the night, uh, the patient had very good sleep. And the second day, he said, thanks doctor very much because it gave me a very good feeling and uh, my pain is almost gone. So we can, one month later, we do the another, another another CT scan, the tumor looks as stable. And this uh, situation maintained for four months and uh, uh, the five months later, uh, the tumor progression again. So from the 2009 to 2012, so we are to use the high fuse in the, almost the, our, all the new cases in the, for advanced the pancreas cancer, we have done the 224 cases. So in this uh, uh, stage, we treat not only the local wasp, and we also treat the, the, the tumor with the uh, metastasis because I just said it in the first nine cases, the pain relief rate is the almost 80%. So, uh, so we use the, uh, 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 the high food for the stage three and the stage four with the pain. So in this, uh, uh, in this uh, more than 200 cases, the data shows the median survival of the stage three is almost 10 months and the stage four is uh, about seven months. So uh, I think this uh, with the same equipment for the high foods, uh, the, the, procedure, the procedures were similar. So we use the prone positions and the power we use is about 200 to 40 waters. And uh, the, the whole processes of the, uh, the HIFU is about one and a half an hour. So they have our videos, we are... Uh, that's the, with the videos we are during the HIFU process. And sometimes we use the future's image to help us to locate the tumor. Let me uh, go fast. So we can see inside the tumor after the high food, the color is changing. So, uh, but it's the very, very slowly. Okay. So we almost uh, screen the safety data in the 200 cases. So it looks like uh, safety is not a problem because only a few cases have uh, the, um, Amylases is uh, increased and uh, some uh, uh, little GI dysfunctions and only one case have uh, uh, the jaundice. I don't think this jaundice may be caused by the high food. So this case is uh, tumor located the head of the pancreas and have uh, because the jaundice have a standing inside and uh, 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 you know, at the beginning, we are worried about if the standing inside the tumor may be cause the reflection of the uh, the ultrasound may be cause the some uh, the desk the the risk of uh, uh, the around the tissues. So uh, uh, in this kind of uh, cases will be uh, down to the power to the 150, uh, 150 and uh, around the 200, uh, 200 waters. So this is the pre-high food, the three months uh, the, the after high food and the six, uh, six months after high food. So, so we can see the tumor is stable. And this case is, is the, 
uh, located the, the body of the pancreas. So this the pre the high food, so one month, three, uh, four months, eight months, 50 months. And uh, this case is just uh, use the one times high foods. It's maintained almost the two years, no chemo, no radiation. And this a progression after two years. So that's, uh, you know, just one, one times high foods so very, very successful. And then like this also in the body of the pancreas, pre high foods, two months and eight months, we can see the tumor volume is shrink. And then this case is, is a do the PET CT scan before and after the high foods. And before the high food, we can see the FDG, uh, uh, the value intake in the in the in the in the tier of the pancreas after after high food and FDG almost disappeared. So uh, in the 2016, we published another data. So we analyzed the more than 600 cases of the advanced pancreas cancer. And in this, uh, in this uh, uh, analysis, so the survival, rate, uh, survival uh, situation is almost similar with the, the, from 2013 to 2016. But in this data, we have another findings because it's called the repeated high food and the one times high foods, the survival, survival time is, is different. So because in the uh, first five years, almost all the cases, we just uh, use the one time, one time is high foods because uh, our medical insurance problems. But in this, after this data, 2016, we found that some the cases repeat high foods is uh, have the advantages of the one time is high foods. So because the high foods, it will not cure the cancer. So uh, this the safety analysis of the single high food and the multiple high foods is look like uh, uh, it's a very similar. So no problem for the multiple high foods. It's a safety. And in 2019, we uh, uh, published the another papers to combine with the high food combination with the gemcitabine based chemotherapies and the worst the gemcitabine based chemotherapy alone. And the, so very ob obviously, the combining high foods, this group of patients have uh, the, the survival advantages because the, uh, we have prolonged the survival time for uh, more than one and a half months. So I think this uh, in the past uh, about 15 years, so the high foods are very popular in our center to use for the pancreas cancer. But uh, I think there's some uh, disadvantages of uh, the high foods and uh, you know, the, the pancreas cancer is uh, in a very deep position of a uh, body man. So uh, sometimes we cannot see it very clear in the, in the ultrasound and the high foods, uh, we use the low power and uh, the treatment is uh, was during a uh, long time, uh, one and a half an hour, two an hour, and then for, for some very sick the cases, they cannot insist on so long time. But this uh, I compare with the other local regional therapies, uh, ablation, uh, high foods, RFU and RE. And the high food, I think the uh, advantage is uh, low risk, not invasive. It's can repeatable and low cost. But for the RFV ablation, uh, I have tried a few cases, uh, but finally I gave up because it's uh, very dangerous and uh, it's, uh, it's more risk. And the RE the, in the, uh, it's very uh, popular in the recent years because have the normal tissue protection. Uh, I have tried uh, about, about uh, 15 cases. I think it's, uh, it's not easy because uh, uh, it's a very it's a need a very very scareful and uh, the cost is very much so much so I think the high food in the uh, in the current situation uh, say uh, have a lot of advantages for the pancreas cancer but uh, the most of the fuel by the pancreas cancer treatments it's the metastasis. So I think the local regional therapy is not the future for the pancreas cancer. 
but in the current situation, uh, the progression of the pancreatic cancer is very, very slow. Uh, I think in the, in the few to 10 years, maybe 15 years, HIFU still have a very, very, uh, very, very good advantages for pancreatic cancer. So uh, that's my experience. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Meng, uh, for the very nice and long experience uh, in your institute. Uh, and of course, you, uh, your center in Shanghai, one of the most famous center treating uh, pancreatic and uh, liver cancer. Uh, Professor Vidal, uh, you have a question for uh, Professor Meng? Yes, uh, I, I, I want to congratulate him for his extended experience as a lot of patients. And uh, my question is, if he has observed any immunological effect, uh, any abscopal effect treating the pancreatic tumors to other regions, to, to nodes, to metastasis, he, he has seen, he has observed that in his group of uh, patients. So me and the, uh, you mean the cases with uh, metastasis, we still use the high food to treat it? Yes, and, and if you have seen uh, immunological effects when treating the tumor, the primary tumor, you have seen a reduction on other tumors, on metastasis or on, or on leaf nodes. Have you seen that in some cases? Oh, so very, very few. You mean the immune response of after the high foods? So yes. Uh, we, yes, we hope so. And now we design a clinical trial. We want to... Uh, Found out, found out if the after the, after the high flu combined with the immune therapy, if it can more helpful to our to our cases that filled by the first line or second line chemotherapies, uh, we are still uh, waiting for the, our RBS approval. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Meng. I I have uh, two questions, please. Uh, first one. What is the, the time uh, you prefer to do HIFO uh, regarding uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy? Uh, which time you, uh, you prefer, according to the experience in your center, to introduce the HIFO? What's the time between radiation, radiotherapy, and HIFO? And which time to introduce the HIFO in combination with chemotherapy? So in fact, uh, we are uh, always used after the first cycles uh, of a chemotherapy, but not with the radiation therapies. Because in China, with the guideline of the high foods, we are uh, uh, if the patient receives more than four, uh, forty-five degrees radiation, we cannot use the high food. So we are uh, most of the cases is just with the chemo and the high food, and uh, generally we use the. Uh, HIFU after the, the first cycle of the chemo. Okay. Uh, also, I, I, you, you, are, you present a case in tail of pancreas. And uh, this area is covered with the colon. Uh, how you can displace uh, the colon? Hey, Professor Meng? Professor Meng? Yeah, yeah. Please go on. I, I'm asking about... Uh, the, the, the colonic uh, uh, protection uh, mm. during uh, uh, tail uh, ablation. What is your experience in this issue? Uh, uh, so we uh, play the water baggers between the, 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 uh, the patient and with the, our transducer. So yeah. uh, we have to uh, avoid the air inside the, with the, uh, the GI tract. So I think the, most of the cases can see clear of our the tumor in the body of the pancreas and the tail of the pancreas. But sometimes it's difficult to uh, uh, locate the tumor inside the, the, the head of uh, the pancreas. Okay. Thank you, Professor Meng. Thanks. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you very much.
uh, let me please uh, introduce my presentation. I will I will talk about uh, the local regional treatment uh, and uh, treating HCC. Of course, uh, I am very happy to uh, chair this uh, meeting with uh, Eastern and Western uh, uh, School of Intervention uh, because uh, this is an, a, a large dilemma in, uh, in intervention uh, as an HCC is the third most common cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide. And the systemic treatment is remain very limited. The surgical resection uh, is very few number of patients are valid for it. The HCC is, uh, is a preventable disease. If we can detect, uh, if we can cut, uh, cut this cause, uh, hepatitis and ethanol and NASH, so we can avoid a lot of causes uh, leading to uh, HCC. And in our country, in Egypt, we face a lot of problem uh, regarding the HCC as uh, in North Africa, is considered the third most common place all over the world affected by uh, HCC and cancer-related deaths. And this is in spite of we, our population is not so large number of population, but we face a lot of problem. So I think in this multidisciplinary meeting, we should know the natural history of HCC and which point we can cut the, the circulation of developing advanced HCC and when we can treat it. Uh, there is a dilemma regarding what is uh, level of evidence uh, level uh, and what is the recommended strong uh, treatment. At the end, we, we find that the sorafenib or the oral anti uh, anti proliferative uh, angio angioproliferative treatment is widely uh, uh, recommended and used with very high evidence, level of high evidence and a very high level of recommendation, but on the ground, it's a very poor uh, treating option. And, and we have a lot of problem regarding this. And, uh, and so the level of evidence and strong recommendation uh, regarding the chooses of HCC, we now uh, it's uh, it's a dynamic process, and all of the uh, all the world uh, groups uh, now uh, re revise the the chooses for treating HCC. Uh, the tumor burden, liver function, performance status are very, very uh, important to uh, pillars to take a decision for the patient. We face a lot of problem regarding the HCC, regarding the different staging system, the size limitation, the number limitation, and the vascular invasion. There is many staging system to how to treat the HCC, TNM, Okuda, Japanese, Chinese, Italian, but still, Barcelona Clinic staging system is the best prognostic classification to treat the patient. But this classification system, which is the most famous classification system, we have only uh, the option for uh, treating uh, HCC, less than 30% of the patient will, uh, can, can have a curative treatment. And they put the three centimeter cutoff size to use ablative procedure. And after this, they put the, most of the patient in palliative treatment with taste or different types of embolization and systemic treatment. But in the last, uh, uh, last uh, published uh, uh, version of the Barcelona uh, HCC, uh, they gave us uh, more options regarding the tumor and they maybe reach up to four centimeter to treat 
the patient with HCC. So first issue, in, in spite of the Barcelona is the most famous classification system, it's provide very low number of, uh, or low percentage of patient with curative treatment, uh, uh, in, uh, like surgical resection or liver transplantation and ablation because uh, embolization and systemic treatment considered as a palliative treatment. So uh, the Eastern people, uh, especially in, uh, in uh, Hong Kong, starting to make a new uh, staging system. And they released the staging system at uh, 20, uh, two, uh, 2008. It's, uh, the, the, they uh, starting to develop Hong Kong classification system. And the Hong Kong classification system released at 2015 with a new edge. They consider the in vascular invasion is a very important issue. And they increase the size of the tumor up to five centimeter. At this point, we can do resection and ablation as a curative treatment. So this is very important if we're talking about the ablative procedure because the HIFO is ablation. So there is another classification, valid classification system talking about the ablation till five centimeter. And of course, the most important thing is the prognostic value of the tumor. In comparison study, the, the Hong Kong group, they found the Hong Kong classification system with very good results and better prognostic value. So when we go aggressive very early, it's more better for the patient. And of course, we should consider very well the Asian experience in treating HCC because the Japanese people are the first one to do right lobectomy. And they are the first one to invent the transarterial embolization. And they are the first people using the super selective taste. So, and even the Okuda system is the first system to merge the clinical of the, the performance state of the patient and the, the parameters of laboratory uh, finding of the patient. So the Japanese experience is very important. And in the Japanese association or a Japanese society of hepatology, they make a four centimeter is another edge for ablation. So you can, after reaching the four centimeter, you can make an ablation. Even if the tumor is more than four, but with no vascular inv invasion, you can do uh, ablation. And you can see uh, this, uh, this chart showing us how, how, what about HCC progression in Japan? In Japan, the progression dropping of the number of the patient of HCC. And regarding the Japanese people, they treat the most of the people at the curative stage with 60% of the patient with curative treatment. And this is very important. So the Japanese experience is very important to, to look at it. And of course, the Hong Kong classification and Chinese association as well. So this is this study showing us the last three decades of experience to treating HCC in Japan. In Japan, they treating about 80% of cases detected by screening. This is very important, how to prevent the, pro, the progression of HCC. In Japan, they reach about 60% patient with Milan criteria, so the curative treatment may be reached up to 70%, either surgical or ablation. In Japan, they, they make and follow up for uh, survival up to 15 years, and this is great for HCC. Also, they found a very good comparable result between radiofrequency ablation and surgical resection. And this is great. After 10 years, the surgical resection and radiofrequency ablation, the, survi the survival uh, reaching up uh, 
Also, the Chinese uh, classification is very important. They uh, they uh, reach up to five centimeter for the tumor valid for ablation. This so this is very important. If there is no major vascular invasion and the tumor size up to five centimeter, you can use an ablation. This is very important. But many, many hospitals like uh, and universities like, like San Diego, California, they make a merge between Hong Kong and Barcelona and put their guidelines. And I want to give you a rapid, uh, rapid uh, ideas about the uh, available uh, local regional treatment, of course, there is ablation, like radiofrequency, microwave, cryoablation, and a reversal electroporation. And this is not an ablation, but it's considered as needle guidance. So they put it as needle guidance. Of course, the radiofrequency is the most famous and the most cheap one. And the, a lot of people has an experience regarding the radiofrequency. And uh, the other issue is, uh, is uh, embolization, we have different types of embolization, transarterial embolization, transarterial chemoembolization, transarterial diptase, what we call diptase, and of course, radio embolization. In some Asian countries, there is also bland embolization. The embolization is uh, forming a mixture from uh, libidol, chemo uh, agent, and make a mixing of both and adding a sponge or gelatin gel foam to uh, increase the embolic effect. Usually we prefer uh, super selective or segmental embolization, but this is very important to make a proper patient selection, proper patient uh, preparation and the timing uh, for, uh, for making uh, the chemoembolization. The deep taste, is it's more, uh, less toxic and more specific. We make a loading of the chemotherapy on the particles and then uh, inject these particles inside the tumor. The radioembolization, we're using the yttrium 90 uh, by uh, the same technique like uh, chemoembolization with some precautions. We uh, inject the tumor, but this is without embolization, this is are just introducing the particle radiation particles to the tumor. And sometimes we, we used what we called uh, radiation segmentectomy in some cases. Usually uh, the radioembolization is preferable technique for uh, transplantation bridging. The thermal ablation radiofrequency is the most widely used technique. It's not only related to the power, and some people talking about the microwave as more powerful than the radio frequency, but it's not only the power. In radio frequency, we have different types of needle, so we can choose according to the shape of the tumor, how, which type of the needle we can use. And uh, they, the ablative procedure now can doing difficult location and using what we called non-touch technique. A difficult location, like, like Professor uh, Simon uh, did in uh, Haifu, we, we uh, did a different, uh, different technique to avoid injury of the bowel and to avoid injury of the vessels. And uh, according to the direction of the power, we use a different needle and maybe perpendicular on the bowel or parallel to the power. And also there is a different technique, what we call the non-touch technique. In this technique, non-touch technique, uh, we use um, two needles and put the, the tumor uh, between it and do, uh, doing an ablation for this zone. Also, we have new hopes. The first hope is the uh, radio radiotherapy. And now the radiotherapy, as professors, in Hong Kong or Shanghai, or even in Egypt, and I think in most of the European centers, they now using the external beam radiation uh, 
uh, but it's still low level of evidence and still weak uh, confidence and weak recommendation. But now that we can, in, in combination with CT or MRI machine, they can uh, do very precise uh, result, especially in portal vein thrombosis. The and this is the American Association of Radiation Therapy. They suggest the uh, radiotherapy to be used in some unresectable cases, either alone or in combination with other methods of, uh, of uh, treatment like taste or radiofrequency. And I put this uh, slide for very important issue. We must as a society and we must as a doctors treating and using HIFU to put the HIFU in as, a, as an alternative technique in some cases, not all the cases of HCC and not all the cases of uh, metastasis to put the suggestion uh, of, uh, of rule of HIFU to treat the uh, HCC. And this is what I try to do. Uh, and of course, all of you uh, doing this. And like this uh, very uh, innovative uh, paper at 2010 by Professor uh, Orsi and Professor Zhang, and they put the HIFU to treat a difficult, a difficult location HCC, like this, like this tumor. It's insinuated between the branches of uh, hepatic veins and uh, IVC. You can precisely see the tumor and the treaters. Like this tumor at the hilum of the liver, insinuated between the IVC and the portal vein. No, any other methods of ablation can do this technique. Like this case for one of my cases, this patient complaining from very small hilar tumor uh, at the liver hilum, we can't do ablation by any methods and his, uh, and his uh, lab is not good. He is not suitable for taste. And we treating him for uh, by HIFU and in single session, and we follow up them up to two years. And you can see this is post-ablation. One month is completely ablated tumor. Even at six months and 12 months, we hardly appreciate the tumor. We can't even see where is the site of the ablative zone. Also, we can put the HIFU in these cases after taste, like Professor uh, Simon showed us, uh, after taste with borderline sized tumor, we can use HIFU as alternative treatment after taste. You can see this is case of large tumor treated with systemic therapy with residual tumor. We do taste and this is the residual tumor it's marginal tumor and with large crescent area at this point. And this is a PET scan showing us this is a residual tumor at the hepatic dome. We make an HIFU for maybe two hours, uh, two hour session, maybe 2000 sonication. And this is the results. We almost ablate all of the residual surrounding the tumor, and we follow up the, the patient after nine months, there is no residual. Also, this is very important, very important indication for HIFU. Uh, some patients are without, out of Milan criteria, maybe the alpha fetoprotein more than 1,000, there is a and they need to make a transplantation and they have ascites. And we have this small lesion. We make a pre-transplantation high four for many patients in our center, even with ascites. And you can see this is an ablation, ablation after high four, and this patient go for transplantation. 
Another indication not related to HCC, uh, like metastatic liver lesions and cholangiocarcinoma. The cholangiocarcinoma is very, very good indication for HIFO because it's, it's hypovascular and we can treat the patient very well by high, uh, cholangiocarcinoma, especially if peripheral type. But I'll show you one of the more difficult cases. It's a central type. This is 25 years old man, pathologically proven cholangiocarcinoma. We can see this is a central type. We put a stent, metallic stent, and the treating the patient. And you can see this is very good response. And even the track of biopsy is ablated. And this is MRI and CT after. Of course, we can put the HIFU also in a small uh, HCC lesion in normal location as a start to, uh, 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 to compare it with the, high f with the radio frequency. Like this study by Professor Tantu, and uh, of course we missed him today, and he have a very good result as comparing the high flow with radio frequency. Regarding the, the, uh, the metastatic lesion, it's another issue. We must introduce the high flow like Professor Vidal talking about the immunomodulation and immune response, because the HIFU is not only mechanical destruction of the lesion, but it's improved the drug delivery and improve the immunotherapy of the patient and the change and alternating the nature. And you can see, of course, all of, all of you have a very good result about this is small metastatic lesions, very good, very easy, very accessible, and you can see a good response easily after the tumor. And this is very easy uh, case. You, see, you can see what we call even like a hemorrhagic coagulopathy, and this is the, uh, the very good sign of very good ablation. This is indicating the HIFU is a strong, it's not weak. Uh, and this is very good result of very simple case. Also, I show you this case with, H, with metastatic lesion at, uh, insinuated between the bowel and the liver uh, surface. And after HIFU, very simple, case, you can see uh, this is like a wedge-shaped ablation. This is also a very good uh, indication uh, that the HIFO is a strong, and sometimes you can't see the infiltration of the tumor, but the HIFO is spread throughout the infiltrated area. And this is good also. Sometimes we do a HIFO, and uh, if the, the, the lesion is responding to the ablation, that means it's not a normal hepatic tissue. Uh, this is also another indication for this very simple case, but it's just be, be below, uh, behind the portal vein, and we can't reach it. The HIFU gave us a very good result. So the, the in metastatic lesion, it's not only an ablative procedure, but also it's a modality of treatment, enhancing the immunomodulation, improving the quality of life. And I think the HIFU should uh, be giving us good, better results if the distance is lower, the size is smaller, the vascularity is less, so, so we can get a better uh, result. And we should put the HIFU in this area to treat the patient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, anyone have a question? Yes, Dr. Simon, please. Hi, um, hi, uh, Professor Hamed. Thank you very much. Um, yes, it's incredible that um, 
were able to perform HIFU in so many different indications. But I cannot agree with you more regarding the um, how we consider HIFU as an ablation, because what we see HIFU is it is actually the ablation modality which can be used even in very advanced cirrhosis. And that is when everything else fails. And I think that's where we should place it because it is not for early disease. It is actually the last resort in some of our patients. And because the morbidity and mortality re um, relating to HIFU is so low and that it is repeatable, we can easily do that successfully even in very uh, borderline patients. And I think that um, we should seriously think about more about combining high food with taste. And that's why I seriously agree that we should extend, um, expand the indications for high food for larger tumors because it is repeatable. We can combine it with taste and it works very well as well. And um, yeah, I'm very curious about uh, your um, experience regarding the treatment of pilocholangial carcinoma. Uh, yes. Did, uh, did you actually experience, was it actually um, at the, uh, portal confluence or was it very peripherally located? Uh, I, I actually, uh, I treat uh, maybe seven cases with cholangio carcinoma. We're preparing the paper now to uh, publish. Uh, most of the patient, uh, the response is complete, especially in the peripheral location. But I just uh, put this case because this is astonishing case because this is not usual to have this great response. I, I wanted to put it for, as an alarm uh, for all of us. We can uh, use HIFU and cholangiocarcinoma and this is great uh, for the patient. Also, there is an entity, Professor Simon, what we called cholangiohepatoma. And this is now... Is, is, is existing on the ground in many cases. Also, uh, we did the test. We found the lesion is not hypervascular. At this, at this issue, we can make a test with HIFO. I agree. I agree with you totally. Uh, we must expand the, the um, indication of HIFO, but we face a problem. We must do this uh, in, as a recommendation from uh, multi multiple centers, not like a personal experience or uh, or individual experience. This is uh, we need uh, make it like the radiotherapists make. They put uh, the radiotherapy as a suggestion in some cases. Okay, I, I, I hope I, uh, I justify uh, the answer for you. Uh, any more question? Any more question? Okay, now uh, I am very happy to introduce my dear friend, uh, Professor Zhu from Second uh, Affiliated Hospital from Chongqing University. I am, uh, blaze, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to see you again. I uh, attend the cases with you and I saw you many times. He is a clever man, he is an experienced in uh, treating uh, many uh, cancer liver patients. I saw him treating uh, this patient very easily. And uh, I think second affiliated hospital in Chongqing, one of the best uh, center uh, treating uh, the cancer live uh, cancer patient as a routine because if you go to this hospital every day you can find the patient treated with cancer pancreas cancer liver liver metastasis as a routine so this is what we call uh, it's common practice treatment so I think uh, he can uh, add for this meeting please uh, dear uh, Zhu. Uh, it's uh, give us uh, your experience. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, Professor Mohammed. So right now I go ahead to my PPT here. Well, can you see this? Can you see my screen? Yes, it's clear. Okay. 
Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, everyone, to join this meeting. I, actually, in China, it's, uh, it's, oh, it's late. Uh, so uh, my topic is have clinical application for liver tumor and a case report. And uh, this is our hospital. It was founded almost 130 years ago. And this is our excellent health team, you can say, of them. And one of, one of, I'm the one of the member. Well, also our center is the national training base for health treatment, which was from September 2005. During the last 20 years, I am lucky to have been working with over 500 doctors in 120 clinics from 29 nations and regions. So in my experience, I have cases with the tumor in the head, on the chest wall, in breast, in the liver, in the pancreas, and in the kidney. Also, the benign diseases in uterus, the tumor in leg, in adrenal glands, in the bone, the tumor inside the abdominal cavity, and even on the bottom of the feet. So sometimes I see the indications for have ablation is from head to feet. Here, the, the, it's a video to show a tumor on the chest wall. The case from IEO, Institution of European Oncology from Milano, Italy. We say the tumor right on the chest wall here. It was divided into slices and we put the focus right on the tumor. One sort of case, one risk change. And dot by dot, we ablated the tumor completely. After the final one, I put my finger into the water tank to touch the skin because it's so close to the skin. I touch it to make sure if there are any burn happened. So finally, we found that nothing happened, not, no injury to skin. And then the tumor was ablated completely, even with the nutrition blood vessels survival from the health treatment. We use the value of risk change to indicate the local population. Generally speaking, if the value changed 10 unit, we say it is ablated. That means the necrosis. So far, we have two clinic guidelines in China. The first one was published on 2005. The second one was published last year. It indicates us the indications for high population. So there's a question, what is the role of high population or have treatment playing in treatment for malignancies? I have, a, I have two stories. The first one is for breast cancer. In 19th century, the surgical treatment is a standard one for breast cancer. The five-year survival was 30% more or less. And 50 years ago, it was, it was thought that the local therapy have no influence on survival. The surgical treatment plus the systemic drugs Together, it prolongs the survival time. Right now, the long-term survival rate for early stage breast cancer is over 90%. The sixth story is for osteosarcoma. During the year, the pre-chemotherapy year, the long-term survival is only 20% with the surgical treatment only, but uh, but with the chemotherapy, such as the neoadjuvant chemo and neoadjuvant chemo, 
That means the modern chemotherapy year, it achieves a long-term survival rate over 60%. The same was the same story happened in our center. We found that for those bone malignancies with the with the 2B stage cancer and chemotherapy, we achieve almost 8% long-term survival. So I believe that there, there are two foundation, foundation stones of tumor therapy. One is the systemic tre treatment uh, with the chemo, TKI target agent, immune treatment, and the local treatment is surgery, high ablation, radiation therapy, ther thermal ablation, TAE or TSAE. We, so I have two cases to show you that the first one, we say that uh, uh, HCC plus the right adrenal gland metastasis is a stage four when the patient was 45 years old. We chose the TAG plus HIF training for that. Finally, we got a complete CR response after TAG plus HIF. After that, we have a very good long time disease free survival of 17 months. But after that, we, got, we found that a new tumor appears on the right portable tumor thrombus. We use have ablation again to ablate it and to keep the blood supply from this right branch of portal vein to protect the liver function. But unfortunately, we found that the PVTD happened to the left portal vein and more and more. We ablated the PVTT, but finally we lost this patient at the 36 month. The second one is with HPV inf infection and no antiviral drug. So this patient was diagnosed as primary liver cancer, HCC plus PVTT in another hospital. The solafilibo was performed as a first line TKI agent. Uh, but three months later, the solafilibo did not work well. After that, we found we choose a TAE plus HIF to ablate the tumor. After that, we say the main body of the tumor was ablated, but the satellites nations around it was not. Then we change the medicine to the gold are available as a second line TKI agent. With that, one month later, the primary lesion shrunk, but we found a new lesion happened in seven, segment seven. We decided to use sort of regular, regular available more time. On five months, we found that the tumor the newly, newly lesion in segment seven is larger. So we performed another TAE plus half ablation for that. With the economic reason, there is no post half CT. After that, we found that the tumor grew bigger and bigger and invaded into the right hepatic vein, even with the IVC. So at this moment, it's it's on 2020. The price of the medicine is was cut off. So it's possible to use PD1 plus regulable together to control those disease. Luckily, we find that the it the PD1 plus regular available works well. Only two months later, we found that the tumor was sm much smaller than previous one. So the P1 plus regular available continues. Go on, go on. 
at 26 months, we see no tumor numbers in IVC, but a tiny one in right hepatic vein. And right now, they, this gentleman is still alive. They follow up uh, with the follow up. So I think that probably there was no such um, best therapy for the patient, but with an appropriate treatment for patient. Sometimes we need to try to find out a good local ablation plus uh, an effective systemic um, agent together to control the patient and uh, to prolong the survival time. So there are already published articles to show the eff uh, effective Effective affection of the half treatment for small HCC. This one from Japan, we say the tumor was ablated completely and with a larger enlarged ablation. And then this is from our colleague, Queen Mary Hospital. They compared with the results from high population and uh, RFA, it, it, it was found that the same OS and the same DFS was indicated. And then this one, this, this article uh, was compared the recurrence after HCC resection, the diameter less than five centimeter, those, uh, those patient was divided into two groups. One is with high uh, ultrasound guided high for and ultrasound guided RFA. The other one is with open approach RFA. Finally, we found out that for all cases, the DFS and OS are similar. For cases under ultrasound guided and, and therapy methods, the DFS and the OS are similar too. And then this one is from our center. We found that the patient with half only compared with half plus taste, the OS two year was 89%. They are similar to. So we believe that for the small GCC, high population will play a great role like other local thermal ablations such as RFA. It, they should be with the same results and with the same complications. Uh, also, we have we have experience with uh, high fibrillation for large HCC. Sure, the long term survival will be worse than th those from small HCC. Our colleagues published articles from here, and uh, this one is from our hospital. And there is a meta analysis to, to involve the nine controlled trials with over 700 cases. It says that TACE plus high fibrillation improved the tumor response and the one to three year survival. So another meta analysis involves 42 articles and over 5,000 subjects. It says that also says the taste plus hive appears to be the most per preferable therapy. The, it, we believe that the taste plus hive ablation together will prolong the survival time and with better survival rate. So, and the, there are some special conditions back to these published articles. They are there. The this group patient is with the si size over seven centimeter with forty two lesions, all of them near major hepatic veins. We see that the tumor in segment one, two, three, four, and uh, right or left lobes, and the near IVC right, uh, right middle left hepatic veins and the portal vein right or left branch of the portal vein, we, we found that they, there is already with survival benefit. 
and we say that the tumor le near the portal vein, portal vein here, and the portal vein here, and the hepatic vein here, and IVC here. We found that there was no major blood vessel injury observed in all of this group. So we believe that just like the case we, we have seen from, from IEO Idani, the blood vessels will be safe from high fibrillation. Uh, and if the, if the tumor was blocked by the ribs, as we all know, the therapeutic ultrasound will be reflected by the bone tissue of the rib or the calcification. So we need, it needs a breath control to move the tumor from, from behind the rib side to into the interspace between two ribs. With this, the therapeutic ultrasound will reach the tumor. If, if there was a large size tumor, it happens the same. For those part appears in the interspace between two ribs, it, will, it could be ablated as routine. For, and with the breath control, we move the blocked one part into the interspace between two ribs. Another method is to intraplural cavity injection. It's, uh, this picture shows, shows the, the normal setting injected inside the pleural cavity. This is the liver and this is the dome. Rib, rib is here, it, it is a black shadow in the ultrasound image. And this is the end of the long, long tissue. And this part, this triangle part is the normal setting. With this, it will create a good acoustic pathway to help us to ablate the tumor completely. Say so this is a case, a male with uh, 42 years old with APCC, we say the tumor was blocked by the ribs here, 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 and here, and uh, blocked by the non-tissue. With those two methods, we could ablate the tumor completely. And then this case is from our co colleague, Professor Tong Yang team. They are, they are from the Limbo Huamei Hospital of Zhejiang, China. This, this tumor is between the liver and the stomach. We found that the tumor was ablated and shrunk after one month. And there was no in, there was no visible injury happening to the liver or the stomach. And this is another case from Professor Tong Yang. We say a tumor in C74 near the heart and near the left branch of portal vein. We see here the left branch of portal vein here, and the, this is the dome. And it's a very tiny one. After that, we there is a strong hyperical change happened and with the, with the sort, of you, sort of you injected under the CUS contrasted enhanced ultrasound, we say it, it was ablated completely. This one is from Professor Tong Yang too. We find that th this part was ablated previously, but a newly one appears here and a very tiny tumor. See, this is the IVC. It's so close to the IVC. And during the during treatment, the uh, hypercoach change happened again. We see the IVC clearly. So just like Professor Simon shows, the tumor near the dome could be ablated completely. This case is from our team. And the, this one is from, from University of Hong Kong. 
the same. Well, this case is from our team. Say this old, old gentleman is 81 years old with the pancreatic cancer liver metastasis. We say that one, two, three, four, five, six lesions. Six lesions six are bled in one half session on November. It, they per, they, it, it's, two, it, uh, it's two and a half hour to complete those, uh, those six tumors. We say the tumor near the diaphragm and then near the portal vein and even near the duodenum. This is a success ablation. Well, this case shows the natural course of a patient with portal vein tumor thrombus. On, as I say, on September 14, 2016, the tumor invaded the one, one of the branch of right portal vein only one month later it grew into the other branch of the right branch portal vein. It, it, was, it was said that the, the natural growth was, uh, is 12 millimeter per month. So this is, uh, this is the, uh, another case. We, we can say that the PVTT right here on the right portal vein. With the solication, I have got the hyperlocal change right here. So we could ablate the primary liver cancer and the portal PVT together in one session. There is a there is a there is a published article shows that for those patients with PVTT invaded two branches of portal vein, there will, will be survival benefits. There are cases, say this one is tumor in segment four with the PVTT on left branch. After ablation, the, the size of the primary HCC shrunk and the two PVTT inside the left branch disappeared. This case is with a large one in segment five and segment six, and which was not shown in this slice. But we can see that the tumor invaded the right branch of the portal, portal vein. One month later, we say the, tum the PVTT was ablated and the flow of the right branch of a portal vein appears again. Well, there, this is a case. We say a huge tumor here, and it invaded into the right branch of the portal vein. With the taste plus half treatment, we say the tumor was ablated completely. And after that, another taste performed. We say the tumor, the size of the tumor gets smaller and smaller, and no more PVTT appears in the right branch of portal vein. Well, this case shows a tumor near the gallbladder. We found that the tumor was ablated completely, but no injury happened to the gallbladder. This case shows, shows a tumor near the colon. We say that it was ablated completely, but no injury to the colon. This tumor is in the is near the Hela region. We found that after ablation, and this one shows the uh, 
binary flow after stent placement with the pressure of the tumor, we see the stent was pressed. I, there is only a thin line. After that, we say with the sh shrunk of the of the tumor, the stent opened wide widely. Well, this case, the next case is I. I'd like to to share some video to you. And we see this one was nothing on 2011. And on 2013, there is a small HCC happened on segment eight. With the first hyperablation, it is a successful CR response. And, but unfortunately, this year we found a new goo, goo tumor on, the, on here again and we ablated it completely. Uh, Professor Zhu, please, yeah. uh, two minutes to finish, please. Oh, okay, I, 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 will, I will speed up. We will go ahead on another one. This is a cholangeal carcinoma, we see here, here, and ablated completely this before and this is after, after, after. And this case is near the dome. It's a colon cancer, with the liver metastasis. And then this is uh, another one with a single large tumor we see is right here. And after that, it looks like uh, some, something left. So we performed a second one. After that, a complete ablation and with sh uh, size shrink. This one is a uh, HCC after recurrence, after resection, we ablate it with that, the size shrunk. Well, I have no time to show the, uh, share the video. Anyway, I can make some conclusions. First, I believe the hive treatment, hive ablation is one alternative local thermal ablation method. It could play a tumor ablation, drug target delivery, and immune upregulation function for the patient. We found that it is safe for large blood vessels and there is no limitation for size of a tumor. And it, it, it could be a conformal thermal ablation. And finally, I believe that it should be with systemic treatment agent TKI, PD1, PD1, CTLA4, chemotherapy, together to benefit the patient more. So I believe in the future, half up treatment or half ablation will be a good tool, a good method for us clinical doctors, and it will be, uh, be benefit for more and more patients. Half high life. Thank you, Daja. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very great. Uh, thank, thank you, Zhu, for a uh, very nice uh, presentation and very wide application for HIFU. And uh, of course, uh, your center is uh, one of the very important center to treating uh, cancer uh, in China and outside uh, China. Okay, any question for uh, Dr. Zhu? Okay, of course I have a question. Oh, uh, I I think uh, one of the one of the most uh, uh, problematic cases is a portal vein thrombosis. Yes. So if we can put the hypho mm -hmm. as a line of treatment for main portal vein thrombosis or sig or lumbar uh, vein thrombosis we can put the HIFU in very good choices for the treatment of the patient. My question, you have a long experience and your center uh, treated a lot of cases. What yeah. about portal vein thrombosis as a HIFU indication? And what is your experience in this? 
And so far, we found that they, and we can we can we can stage the PVTT as different stages. Uh, if the portal vein tumor thrombus grew into the SMV, we think it's a very late stage, and uh, we can do less for the patient. But if the PVTT is only on the right or left branch of portal vein, it will be very good in benefit for uh, survival. So, so far, we, we found that we have the experience of around 15 months, 15 months for those patients with, uh, with uh, PVTT. And if the PVTT limited, in the branches of right or left branch portal vein, it will be over 20 months survival time. And I think, I, and I think if we can, we can find out the tumor right on the left branch or the right branch, it will be the best choice for the patient. And that will be the best uh, survival benefits. Okay, uh, you did you publish uh, these results and technique for uh, portal vein thrombosis? Uh, not yet. Actually, the article is uh, under preparation. I believe it will be published tomorrow or the next year. Next year, okay. I, I yeah. want uh, the first uh, first uh, published uh, first published uh, paper for me because i think oh, this, why not? <laughs> this will, will increase the uh, indication for uh, hifu in uh, in many places all over the world i think uh, this is very good uh, indication yeah. yeah thank you zo and thank you for your uh, uh, for uh, i of course i have a lot of questions but i can ask you uh later because uh, we have uh, we have short time to yeah. introduce professor yang uh, the director of many many invasive tumor a chief physician uh, and he is a medical oncologist of course uh, he can share us his experience he has a lot of uh, papers a lot of uh, uh, chairing and uh, treating high for patient of course we will be happy to hear from her, uh, to hear from her uh, his experience about treatment of progressive stage of pancreatic cancer and i think uh, this is a very good uh, issue to learn from him uh, professor yang please oh, thank you thank you chairman uh, can you hear me yes hello okay. let me share my screen it's great for us It's okay. It's okay. Okay, thank you. Um, now it's uh, so late in Beijing. So um, good evening and good morning. Um, professions from the fifth medical center of the PRA General Hospital in Beijing. The topic of my report is application of high food for the treatment of prognosis, a progressive stage of pancreatic cancer. Uh, a single center experience. Uh, we know that pancreatic cancer is called the king of uh, cancer. In 2020, the Global Cancer uh, Registry date showed it that the incidence of pancreatic cancer ranked 12 in the Global Cancer uh, Incidence Rate. Although not a high in, uh, incidence rate, uh, but it ranked seventh uh, in cancer mortality. Its development in rapid, uh, uh, its uh, uh, prognosis is very poor, and uh, the five year survival rate is very low. At present, uh, the study suggests that surgical resection uh, is a displacement method for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. 
but about 16% of them have meta, meta, uh, metastasis in, at diagnosis, and 25% uh, in already local advanced, and only 15% can undergo surgical resection. In recent years, in recent years, although the disease has, uh, has made some progresses in surgical, in surgery, chemotherapy, and other fates, um, but the long, uh, long-term survival of pancreatic cancer uh, patients is still not ideal. Therefore, the main uh, direction of research is to strengthen transformation and uh, clinical research and explore precision treatment under MDT mode. At present, local ablation technology is used uh, more and more widely in the treatment of tumors. The main technologies used in the uh, clinical treatment of pancreatic cancer included radiofrequency ablation, terio ablation, IRE, and uh, high flu. The role of local ablation treatment is uh, considerate to induce a reduction tumor load, prolonged disease control time, uh, elevating cancer pain, and uh, improving patient's quality of life. Uh, we know uh, the high flow can lead uh, can lead to a variety of biological change, uh, changes after uh, entering the body. Among them, the effect ablation refers to the structure changes that can produce uh, coagulative necrosis. In addition, some high full devices, uh, devices and uh, mosses cannot achieve ablation effects, but can only produce function and changes, which is not what we discuss today. So, uh, therefore, not uh, all high flow are uh, focus ultrasound ablation in the clinical application of tumor focus of uh, ultrasound treatment technology, which can achieve ablation effect, is more important. Uh, our center uh, indications for the use to, uh, of high flow in treatment of pancreatic cancer included tumor size physical condition and the treatment uh, desire, uh, desire and uh, etc. The treatment uh, control, uh, uh, control uh, indications mainly included the safety uh, indexes of treatment channel or uh, organ function, treatment um, position and so on. This is the method and the specific treatment uh, parameters for the treatment of uh, pancreatic cancer in our center. The method of point, uh, point uh, scanning is usually uh, adopted with an average power of about 400. Try to arrange treatment under general anesthesia. Our uh, previous study showed that HIFU can achieve good loc uh, local ablation effect in the treatment of pancreatic cancer. In the clinical study of uh, six, uh, uh, 83 patients, according to the m resist evalua uh, evaluation criteria, OR can reach 18.3% uh, and the DCR can reach 96%. Uh, let's show a few cases. This is a 14A years old female patient with a pancreatic neck ductal adenocarcinoma with lung metastasis and a significant abdominal and uh, lumbar uh, pain. After uh, high treatment, the pain uh, score decreased from 7 to 2. Pancreatic tumor necrosis was significant. The patient survival, survived for a uh, uh, 18 months after combined chemotherapy. This is a 59 uh, years old uh, female uh, patient. She was given two cycles of uh, article chemotherapy after surgery, followed by focus ultrasound ablation under general anesthesia. After operation, she was uh, given oral chemotherapy and uh, survived uh, for 24 months. 
This is a 65 years old male patient, patient with panorectic, uh, poorly different uh, pitted adenoid carcinoma. He had received IRE treatment before, and uh, our high full treatment time was about four, four, uh, 14 minutes. The post-operative pain score of high full uh, decreased, uh, decreased from eight to two. This is a, a 45 years old male patient with panorectic tile uh, cyst adenocarcinoma. Tumor necrosis was significant after high full without panorectic uh, fistula, uh, fistula and um, pancreatitis. Uh, and, and, uh, this is a, a, a 59 uh, 59 uh, years old may patients with panorectic neck adenocarcinoma. After high treatment, the local focus necrosis uh, was significant and uh, gradually absolute, uh, 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 absorbed and uh, shrunk. Uh, the patients, uh, 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 the patient was uh, uh, panorectic uh, and tail. The treatment uh, channel was established through the spleen to achieve uh, completed completion. There were no serious complications after operation. The second uh, uh, feature of HIFO is the treatment of pancreatic cancer is the effective control of cancer pain. Our initial and uh, later study have shown that the pain relief rate is more than uh, 94%, uh, whether it's a treatment under general uh, anesthesia or not. It can also be seen uh, for a, a literature report that have can achieve more than 18% uh, cancer pain relief rate in pancreatic cancer. No matter uh, whether the ablation effect is achieved or not. Another uh, um, characteristic of HIFU in the treatment of polyp cancer is the effective destruct of the uh, celiac nerve. We have conducted a study to compare the eff uh, efficiency and the safety of HIFU in the treatment of pancreatic uh, lesion combined with uh, celiac nerve uh, damage. The, combina uh, the combined treatment group was treated with high full for pancreatic lesion and uh, celiac nerve, uh, where the control group was only treatment with high full for pancreatic lesion. Uh, the study shows uh, that the OR of both groups can reach more than 18.2% uh, and the DCR can reach more than 91%. Uh, the pain relief, uh, the pain uh, relief rate and the median pain relief uh, duration in the combined statement group were 19, uh, 95% under seven months where those in the control group were 19% and three months respectively. Uh, com uh, comparative studies also show that uh, the incidence of, uh, of tumor, uh, uh, of uh, abdominal tumor progression in the combined treatment group decreases suggested that in might to be really, uh, related to blocking the pathway of pancreatic cancer along the uh, celiac nerve. The, st uh, the study uh, takes of uh, complications show that the complication of the two groups, many included fever, pain screen junior, uh, in injury, and uh, an impaired gastric empathy. More than 19% uh, were mild. Uh, relatively, the uh, incidence of the impaired uh, gastric emptying in the control treatment group increased slightly. All complications uh, recovered gradually uh, compared with the control group. 
the recovery time of gastric amperpin disorder in the combined treatment group was uh, prolonged. Our study showed that the high food can prolong the survival time of an adenal pancreatic cancer, uh, advanced uh, 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 can pro, uh, pro, uh, prolong the survival time of ID, uh, advanced pancreatic cancer, both the, uh, the early study and the paper over the age of uh, 60. The median survival time of stage three and the four patients after have full combined comprehensive treatment can reach uh, 16 months and uh, nearly 10 months respectively. Among them, the median survival time of stage three patients receiving high full comparing chemotherapy and radiotherapy can reach about 24 months. In addition, uh, high full treatment of pancreatic cancer listen combined with celiac nerve uh, destruction also seems to help prolong uh, the survival time of patients. The um, analysis of clinical influencing factors showed that OS could be significantly prolonged in patients with high full combined with systematic treatment and uh, ablation effect, uh, efficiency above PR. Uh, brief, uh, briefly discussing several uh, topics. First, not all high full can achieve ablation effect. Our study uh, suggested that ablation effect is a significant uh, factor affecting OS. Therefore, it can be seen in some uh, literature that the survival benefit of high full treatment is not obvious, but the lo uh, local treatment effects is not mentioned, which may, uh, may be uh, related to the poor effect of local ablation. Uh, in addition, we uh, once found a case of anti-tumor immunodistant effect caused by high food treatment. This is a 16, uh, uh, 56 years old man patient. Uh, we only uh, performed local treatment of pancreatic cancer by high food and did not perform other anti-tumor treatment. The local necrosis of pancreatic uh, tumor can be seen from the follow-up data. The result of the examination two uh, months after operation showed that uh, untreated pulmonary metastasis uh, were significantly reduced, uh, suggesting that high full treatment may lead to the occurrence of anti-tumor immuno decent effect. This is a very interesting case. In addition, uh, the uh, complications of high food treatment need to be paid close attention. We know that non-invasive treatment is not without trauma. High food treatment of pancreatic cancer is in some treatment center uh, has had serious complications such as intestinal uh, preparation. Uh, therefore, we need to familiarize ourselves uh, with the treatment machines, uh, standardize the technical operation, and uh, do well uh, in the man uh, management of perioperative uh, pepper peri. well, Finally, let us uh, uh, make a brief summary High full has the uh, advantage of non-invasive technology in the, uh, in the treatment of pancreatic cancer, which can effectively uh, uh, alleviate, uh, alleviate cancer pain, improve the quality of life, and uh, extend the survival time by achieving ablation efficacy, uh, efficacy and campaign systemic therapy but still need to pay attention to research safety and the campaign and treatment uh, stages. That's my all uh, report. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, your voice. Thank you. 
Hello, it's, it's now okay. Thank you, Professor Yang, a very illustrative and very nice presentation. And uh, your talk uh, opened our mind regarding uh, some uh, issues all of us uh, talking about, but uh, the proof is, uh, is not in our hand. So you gave us a proof about uh, two main issues. The first one is the celiac plexus ablation. Uh, we, we noticed some cases not improving so well after uh, hypho ablation and some cases improving very well. You in, you're intending to ablate the anatomical site of the celiac plexus, and this is good. And the other issue is the uh, immunomodulation uh, occurred at the distance metastasis, I think. Uh, these two topics are very nice to talking about, to publish about, and to make a brainstorming about it. Uh, so any one of uh, our audience uh, need to ask uh, Professor uh, Yang about uh, his uh, nice presentation. Okay, I, I have a, 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 very, uh, a very small question. Regarding uh, using the spleen to uh, go through with the hypho, uh, is, is, uh, is it uh, dangerous, uh, Professor Yang? I think this is dangerous to avoid the splenic rupture or splenic injury. What's your experience about this? Uh, uh... Uh, in our operation, we um, treatment uh, for about 15 seconds and uh, the, uh, take away the uh, from the skin. Uh, so the uh, for longer the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the duration um, after treatment, um, the, uh, the energy uh, 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 improve the skin. So uh, it can be uh, safe the skin and the, uh, other organ. Yes, but you, you introduce a case, you, you show us a case, you go through the spleen to treat the pancreatic tail uh, tumor. Uh, uh, you, you face any problem in this case? Mm, no, we can know uh, uh, this question. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for all professor participating in this uh, very nice uh, webinar. Uh, anyone uh, need uh, to give a comment, uh, Professor Vidal, Professor Simon, Professor Yang, uh, my dear friend uh, Shu. Anyone uh, need to add uh, question or uh, notes or anything? No. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. So can I suggest uh, a group picture? Uh, everyone, please uh, give us a chance to uh, open the camera and, uh, and we can go to the group picture to, uh, to have uh, all of our uh, audience. Yeah. Please, uh, please open the camera, please. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> surprise, yeah. Never get surprise for you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Raul. How are you? Hi. Hi, Tony. How are you? Hello, Samir. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your time. And uh, it's a great event and uh, all of us uh, add a knowledge to each other. And I hope to meet again and again in similar meeting. Nice to meet you. And uh, I, I hope to see you all uh, face to face very soon. Yes, very Thank soon. You. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much.
See you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a nice time. Have a nice time. Bye. Bye. An ultrasound beam can be brought to a tight focus at a distance from its source. With sufficient energy concentrated within the focus, the cells lying within will be killed without damaging the surrounding tissues. High-intensity focus ultrasound IFU, is, therefore, a non-invasive method of producing selective and trackless destruction of deeply seated tissue targets within the body without causing any damage to the overlying surrounding tissues. Ultrasound guided HIFU involves HIFU ablation under the guidance of real-time ultrasound imaging, which can achieve an uninterrupted visualization of tissue cogulative necrosis during the treatment via grayscale changes in real time. The ablated lesions demonstrate an echogenicity or grayscale changes in the ultrasound images after the sonication, which enables immediate assessment of patient's response to ablation, ensuring a safer and more controllable therapy. An ultrasound beam can be brought to a tight focus at a distance from its source. With sufficient energy concentrated within the focus, the cells lying within will be killed without damaging the surrounding tissues. High-intensity focus ultrasound IFU, is, therefore, a non-invasive method of producing selective and trackless destruction of deeply seated tissue targets within the body without causing any damage to the overlying surrounding tissues. Ultrasound guided HIFU involves HIFU ablation under the guidance of real-time ultrasound imaging, which can achieve an uninterrupted visualization of tissue cogulative necrosis during the treatment via grayscale changes in real time. The ablated lesions demonstrate an echogenicity or grayscale changes 